Welcome to another video on uh, Tinkercad. This time we want to focus on learning how to uh, use the oscilloscope and the function generator that is provided as part of Tinkercad when we do analysis of circuits. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, the assumption is that you've already uh, know how to use Tinkercad. If you don't know how to use Tinkercad, you've been watching the previous uh, uh, videos, which talks about uh, various uh, startup needs, uh, things you have to do to get going on Tinkercad. They're available in the Tinkercad playlist under ENGRCS. So you're welcome to uh, visit that to channel, ENGRCS.com channel and look at the other videos that are available on, on that. And here, we're gonna focus on talking about function generators and scopes, oscilloscopes, which is commonly referred to as a scope. So let's go ahead and start out. We'll, we'll create a new design. Um, and uh, that brings us to this page. And uh, so the, the scope and the other things don't show up under the basic components, so you have to go to the all component to see those. And then, uh, <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is just uh, go find uh, those items. And here is the oscilloscope or scope, and here is the function generator. As we have talked before, all you have to do is click on this and you'll be able to place one of these. And as you re recall from the previous videos we've done and the work you may have done on Tinkercad, every time you put a component of any sort down, they'll give you a properties that go with this. For example, this one, we have a name for this function generator, so we can call it FG1 in case we have an FG2. And um, we can set the frequency for it, we can set the amplitudes, and we can set the uh, offset. And we'll talk about each of those when we're looking at the pictures on screen. And then square wave, you can stop this. This uh, device allows you to do square wave, sine wave, and triangle wave. And you can also set them by clicking on the appropriate buttons here. The other device we want to get familiar with, because if our signals are changing in time, it would be a nice way for us to look at that signal as a change in time. You can use a multimeter to do that, because a multimeter can give you just the number, but rather you want to see how the signal is changing over time. So you need to use an oscilloscope. So oscilloscopes basically, as you can see, the properties are here. Uh, it automatically decides what the vertical axis would be and it'll give you the plus and the minus and writes here what the plus and minus voltages will be. But it decides based on what kind of signal you're putting in there, so you don't have to set it up. But you are able to set time per division, which basically says each one of these subscores right here is how many, it's right now set to 100 milliseconds. And depending on what signal you're looking at, you gotta think about what the period is for that particular signal. So you have to set your screen with enough time so you can see at least one whole period of the signal. And typically when somebody says, show me the signal, uh, a periodic signal such as square wave and uh, sinusoidal signals and triangle uh, waves, they're asking for you to show at least one full cycle so they have all the information they need about that signal. Okay, enough of that. Let's go ahead and connect these two together and see if we can kind of do some exercises to get a sense of how this thing works. So as we've done before, all you have to do to wire, there's the positive side of this, and we'll just take a wire from here. And once again, the idea is that these wires will be straight shots. So um, the expectation is when you do schematic, the lines are either horizontal or vertical. And it's a good idea to use colors that represent this. So in case this is a very complicated circuit, you are able to uh, follow the lines without getting confused by using the same color. Sometimes that is difficult to see. And as you can see, it's pretty easy to modify this thing. And we'll set this one to black to indicate that's the ground section. So that's pretty much, so what I did, I connected my function generator. My function generator's job is to generate one of these three signals here with some parameters that I can set. And so let's go ahead and start. For example, we're gonna set this thing at a thousand hertz or one kilohertz. And then we're gonna set the magnitude at five. 
and that's a default that comes up. And the reason this is a default because the, the, in the computer systems and digital systems, we have a concept called clock, which everything is used to synchronize everything, much like the clock on the wall gets human synchronized. This is a square wave and everybody agrees that on the, on the side where the signal is coming from zero to high voltage, people are gonna do some stuff. So that's called a rising edge and everybody gets synchronized to that. So everybody knows when they have to do their piece tasks. So that clock, this, this clock is pretty useful. So if you go buy your computer and they say your system is running at, I don't know, four gigahertz, what they're telling you is that there's a square wave in your system or somebody of a square wave in your system that's running at four billion uh, cycles per second. Okay. okay, let's do our thing here. And so we have set ours to run at a thousand hertz, have a five volt voltage and a two and a half uh, volt offset and it's a square wave. So, so that's great. This is set and now we're gonna go over here. I know it's one kilohertz, which means I have 1000 cycles per second, which means that each period would be one over 1,000. So if I can have 1,000 per second, 1,000 cycles per second, that means each one of the cycles will take one over 1,000. So if I want to see a full cycle here, I can't use 100 millisecond. I, I'm going to, if I use 100 millisecond, actually, let's take a look at it. If I use 100 millisecond per division, I'm going to have roughly 100 cycles per division. So let's go ahead and we'll do this for the time being and see what we see. Okay. It's, it's so long that uh, we won't be able to detect these things. So let's go ahead and set this thing to, let's say one, okay? So now what we are seeing here is we are seeing one millisecond per division, which basically each division is one millisecond. So notice one full cycle is being executed in one millisecond. Maybe I wanna see a little more detail. Typically we wanna have one to two cycles per this. So and let's say if I set this thing to point two, let's see what we see. I gotta stop this to make it work. So 0.2 millisecond. And there it is. So that looks pretty good. I have a full cycle and I have a little leftover on either side if I need to do that. So I measure that is two and a half on this side, two and a half on this side. So it's five division. Each division is 0.2, so one millisecond or one one thousandth of a second per division, which agrees with us having a frequency of 1,000 kilohertz. That sounds great. And then if you look at this, it says this is 20 volts per division. That means basically 10 volts is above here and then 10 volts is below here. So that's 20 end to end, which means this is, so it's one, two, so this is 10 volts. It look like this is five division. That means each division is two volts. So I've got one division, two division, and half a division. So two and a half times um, two gives me five volts and that's what this is set to. What is this two and a half? This two and, two and a half is referred to as a DC offset. Now, watch what happens if I were to zero this out. Let me see if I can zero this out, okay. Maybe I can take the dial and turn it to, oh, but it's easier to find. Can I go, yeah. So let's see if I can get it almost to zero. It's kind of, sensitive, so I'll get as close as I can. All right, um, so 20, 24 millivolt minus is pretty darn close to zero. Let's see if I can, oh, that's good enough. And you notice this is what a, what a square wave looks like. Half of it is above, half of it below. But if I wanna run a digital system, my digital systems have to have zero and one, and that's why we take the half of, this is called peak to peak, and, uh, so, this is gonna be two and a half volts above, two and a half volts below, but I really want this thing to push up. And the way I push up is change the DC offset and push it up. So if I change the DC offset to roughly two and a half, what's gonna happen, this is gonna go above the line. Right? It's not exactly two and a half, but close enough for other purposes. Okay, and usually this is the systems don't work. So what you have to do, if you wanna do a precise value, I have to stop this thing and go to two and a half, even though the dials work and then run it again, okay? <clears throat> now, I can also use this, although we won't use it in digital design, but in an analog and stuff like that, sometimes you may wanna get a direct, uh, the sinusoidal wave. 
and definitely don't want to have, typically with sinusoidal, we don't use offsets and run it to be zero. And, um, and then five volt is fine, or I can even change this thing to 10. And, and when I change it to 10, notice what happens. Uh, stop, start it over again. So if you see, I change it to 10, I have five above and five below, and instead of this being like 10 volts per division, I was 20 volts per division. And so, um, so those are the things. And one of the things when we were talking about square wave, there is another concept which is called a duty cycle. And the duty cycle is the ratio of the on time over off time. So how long it's on over, I'm sorry, it's how long it's on over how long the whole cycle is, and that's called a duty cycle. Uh, unfortunately, or maybe it makes it easier for us, fortunately, uh, we cannot change the duty cycle in this device. And, uh, in, in other more sophisticated systems, you can do that. You can change how long it's on versus what the period is, and you can change both the period and how long it's on, and that's called on online on time divided by the cycle time is called the duty cycle. And um, so anyway, so that's uh, that's all you need to know as far as how scope works and how a, a signal generator works. Um, thank you for watching, and uh, look forward to the next video.